Let me tell you something about part of the reason we moved to California. In New York, it rains. A lot. Like, right after you wash the car, every damn time. Like, even if you've flown all the way across the country just to film one car, and Monticello lets you use their track, and you only have this one day because the car needs to go to the owner, it still rains. Hard. Fortunately, this week's ride puts power to the ground through four wheels, not just two. So even if the sun don't shine, I'm still gonna go fast. If, that is, he'll let us take it on the track. Which, as long as it's raining, he won't. This is the second of 11 Evo 10s that racer Ryan Gates is offering as turnkey packages for the Evo. No aspect of the car is left untouched. It gets more power, better handling, bigger brakes, classic interior touches, and accents painted in what might be the perfect shade of blue. My name is Ryan Gates. I'm a racing driver, and I also created the 311 RS Evo 10. I kind of had an inkling that the Evo 10 was going to be something special, and someone had to prove it. So I decided in 2008 I bought an Evo 10, sold my 9, moved forward with it. 311 is my racing number. I've had it since I was four. Race car for the street. Um, a lot of other cars use the RS moniker for the same, you know, concoction of a car. The goal from the beginning with the 311 RS was, like I said, to give back to the partners we worked with. It was a really good way for us to show everything we learned, but also to offer like, customers a chance to drive like a, a real motorsport influenced car. And that's not something you get to experience all the time. So basically we took everything we learned from the track, put it in a street car, refined it, and offer a package that you can drive to the track, you can drive it home, and it eliminates the whole trailer. It's a nice little setup. Eventually, the rains broke and the sun came out, just long enough for us to get in a few laps with the 311 RS before the track closed. His goal with this build is to have a better Evo, not just a faster Evo, but a better one. So the tension is really in the details. He's added some more power. This thing is making 360 horsepower at the wheels. Obviously, it's still all-wheel drive. Obviously, still very easy to drive. It's got some Nitto tires on it, these lovely blue wheels. He's upgraded the suspension, with JRZ triple adjustables, big brakes, uh, four piston in the front, two piston in the rear. The car weighs 3,100 pounds, removable cage, all the good toys, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It is a gorgeous car from every angle. And let's see, it's 80 on the back straight here. There's 90, there's 100. 105, there's 110, there's 120, uh, no need to lift there, 130, 135, so that was about 135 on Monticello's back straight there, not bad, as usual for an Evo, very rev happy, kind of buzzy, and really easy to throttle steer. A lot of great details in the interior from the suede, Etnies E suede all over, the picnic basket stuff. Everything matches. I feel like I'm just rambling right now because I'm whipping. So we worked with John Sabal to design the livery. It's, it's simple, it's subtle, but it's, it's very unique and we wanted it to be timeless. So typically with tuner cars, it can go uh, the opposite way really quickly. We actually designed a color with DuPont. It's a combination, it started out blue, we added some satin, pearl, um, silver metallic, and then even a little bit of green. So it's, it's a unique color depending on light. So the interior of the car, that's where we were able to get, uh, get a little creative. That's for me the most fun part. Um, the outside of the car is effective, but the inside, it needed to be special. So we chose the tartan, black watch tartan in there. It's a combination of green, black, and blue. It doesn't necessarily match the car, but when you get in the car, you see it, it somehow works. We got really lucky, and I think that's my favorite part about the car. Etnies Eastwood, everywhere. Dash, A, B, C pillars, headliner. Eastwood <laughs> is really cool. They use it on their shoes. So for skaters, shoes usually they wear. So Etnies Eastwood, they created this product to be three times more wearable. And in a racing car, when you're touching everything, things get moved, you're always kind of grabbing the steering wheel. And we thought it would be a perfect fit. The wooden handbrake. It's hand carved actually in Minneapolis by a company called Quincy Design Co. It, it forms to your right hand as you wrap around, there's different grip holes. So it's, 
It's like a pistol grip, but taking it a step further. The shifter they got off a 1971 Ferrari. Feels right at home in here, it's cool. The bodywork is all stock. They've just flared out the fenders a little bit so they can add wider 19 inch wheels without them rubbing. It works, they don't rub. <laughs> Hucking one of these into a corner is so fun. And what I'm digging about this one so far is that it doesn't really feel like a tuner car. It feels like a faster stock, like almost like we never got that FQ400. But I feel like this is what that would be like. Oh, left foot braking just tucks that nose right in, come out of the corner. Great place to drive a car here. We've worked with AMS Performance for five years now. They cover all of the engine work on this car. It's the basic set of bolt-ons and then a little bit of the fine refining that we learn throughout the way. It's a lot of little tricks throughout uh, JRZ, same type of thing. It's not just a bolt-on set of three-way dampers. You can't just do that. It's, it's how you set it up. It's the way everything works together. And that's the whole idea of this package. Judas two-piece rotors that are four and a half pounds lighter front, four pounds lighter in the rear. It's, it's incredible. 20 pounds, just rotors. That's a big deal for this car. It's, you know, this car is, I think, a total of 230 pounds lighter than stock. Um, part of that comes from the Akrapovich exhaust. It's titanium. Um, the roll bar in there is fall line. We use chromoly, uh, chromoly steel. It's, it's stronger, but it's also a lot lighter than typical mild steel. So we chose that. It, it comes in, comes out in about 15 minutes. We run the same CE28s on my race car. Uh, 18 by 10 and a half plus 18, and then the Nitto NTO5s. So are the same tires we run on our race car. 275, 35, 18. That pretty much rounds out you know, the, the performance bit of it. It's, it sounds simple, but it's effective, and everything works together well. As we pass 120, I mean, obviously very easy to do these kinds of speeds. There's 130, 135. I think that's about the number for the straightaway here is 135. The car likes to go. You know, these Evos, it's very tempting to try and do some five or 600 horsepower build. What you end up with is a car that breaks. It'll be unreliable. 360 wheel or about 430, 440 crank is gonna be a really solid, really reliable horsepower number that you can daily drive. You can drive it to the track, you can drive it home from the track. <laughs> Pulls nice out of the corners, not much turbo lag. This car right now, you see it's set up for the current owner. This is number two, number one was the prototype. And this one is set up for a guy who likes sports cars and wanted sort of a first track car. So it's set up to understeer, which is safe right now. Fully adjustable, so as he improves, look at that, it's a lot of understeer. As he improves, he can dial in more oversteer and correct. But right now, if you, you kind of have to enter corners a little slower than you'd like to. You can come out of them flat. One of my favorite options on this car, and also one of the owner's favorite options on the car, are the JRZ 1231 Motorsport shocks. The triple adjustable, the range is huge. You can go from a street car to a true motorsport damper and literally an adjustment. So Matt came in after the first try. Um, he was going on it pretty hard. He's a little bit more experienced than the owner of this car. So he had, you know, he gave us some feedback. He mentioned that the car was understeering. Not a lot of understeer, but uh, as you would push it, um, it would understeer, so he basically said that the car was set up to be really safe. And that's exactly what it was. It's the owner's first track day, we needed to keep it safe. I spoke to Brian at JRZ, um, we made a couple quick adjustments, added some rebound to the front, some compression to the rear. Brian made that change in a total of, I think it was 17 seconds. I like this car. I mean, I really, really like it. It's a lot of fun. Very light, if you go brake and then rotate, whoop, there we go. <laughs> All you want to do is get as much four-wheel sliding as possible in an Evo, even though it's really not necessary. It's way too much fun. You feel like you can drive it at the limit in a totally safe, non-scary way. It's predictable, it pulls out of corners great. The suspension may need to be adjusted a little bit, to dial out a little of that understeer, but it's got a lot of tire, 
and you kind of know exactly what it's going to do before it does it, which is brilliant. I've always said that in the past, when you buy an Evo, you spend 40 grand on the drivetrain and get the rest of the car for free. It's an incredible performance chassis with a tin can plopped on top, and despite the performance, isn't something an upscale buyer would want to spend time in. The 311 RS changes that. It's nicer in every single way than a stock Evo, and the touches and attention to detail make it seem like the $49,000 price of entry, including the car of course, is worth it. If you want a 311 RS like this one, you better think loaded C7 Corvette money, not loaded Mustang GT money. But if you simply must have the most well-rounded Evo that money can buy, hit up Ryan Gates. For now anyway, there's nine left.